Hey guys, welcome back to the show. Uh, today we're going to make a pretty cool looking nighttime scene for Unreal Engine, uh, including a pretty dynamic moon with some customizable factors, some uh, variables and that kind of thing. And to get us started, I've put together a little care package for you guys, including a color lookup table, just a plane and a sphere that we're going to use for our mesh and some glow, and a diffuse texture for a moon that I've sourced from a, a, a free location and turned into a 1824 uh, diffuse map. So without further ado, let's get started. Just uh, click on the sky to begin. And what we're going to want to do is change the sun height to minus one. It's going to put it directly under the world. But as you can see, no moon, unfortunately. And also the stars. We're going to want to put the stars up. 1.7 was what I used. Brings the, makes the stars all nice and visible. Next. Uh, we're going to go back to our post-process volume. We want to find exposure, because as you can see, this is still pretty bright for, for nighttime. Change the, let's say, max brightness to 5 and the minimum brightness to 4.7. That darkens things up nicely. And to finish off our sort of base nighttime effect, still in our post-process, uh, find your color lookup table, color grading lookup table, and drag in the one from the care package. If you would like uh, more information on how to use color lookup tables and how to put one together, how to get the effects that you like, uh, check out this video that's also on my channel where I go through it in a little bit more depth. So we can now proceed to building out our moon. So just right click in your editor and create a new blueprint class. We want an actor. This one's our moon blueprint. By the way, if my keyboard seems loud, I just got a new one and it's mechanical and the keys are really, really loud. I'll try and tone it down as much as I can in post, but. I think it's going to be pretty loud. I'm sorry for that in advance. So open up our moon blueprint. We want to add a couple of static meshes. And we want one for the moon and another one for the glow. So our moon static mesh, oh, it's not called moon. That's my mesh sphere and our glow. Is going to be mesh plane. Done. So there's our sphere and our plane. Now let's make the we'll make the plane just a little bit bigger than the moon, just so that it's not being not being hidden. And we also want to rotate this guy ninety degrees, so he stands upright. And we'll put him behind the moon a bit, so we don't get weird flickery effects with the with the materials. But with that done, we'll just hit compile and save. We can get on to making materials. So just right click, make a new material. This one's the moon mat. And we'll just open that up. Make our texture, this is our moon diffuse. All right, we're ready to kick it off. So there are a few controls that we wanna have for our moon. For example, like brightness, glow, a couple of like realism effects. Uh, for one, also the rotation, the rotation of the moon so we can get it to face, uh, face the, the world in that sort of realistic angle. To do that, we need a texture coordinate node to manipulate the UVs of our of our material. We want to add the texture coordinates to our new value for the UVs. So hold an S and click to create a scalar parameter. This one, our rotation angle. Hopefully I can spell right. And we'll feed this into an append and we're just going to append zero. So that we're only dealing with the X value of the UVs. And that goes into the add, the add goes into the UVs, and that's done for our rotation. So next up, we'll control how much the, how much the moon can glow. So we'll just multiply our moon texture by white, basically. So we'll hold in three and click, brings up our three vector, set R, G, and B all to one, so that it turns white. This needs to go into another multiply, and we'll multiply it by a new scalar. This one is our glow crank. And our glow crank for now, we'll set this at 0 0.5, a uh, little high, we'll set it to one. Plug it into a multiplier, and this multiply into this multiplier. That sets up our glow. <clears throat> Next up, we'll control the saturation of the image on the moon. We don't want it too harsh, we don't want it too, uh, too white. So we'll go from this multiplier straight into a clamp, and we'll need another constant, this one just at one, just to be our maximum. So that's, that's you know, maximum white and zero will be our maximum image. 
So we'll hold an S and click this one. Image saturation. Hear those mechanical keys? I can't stand the sound of mechanical keyboards. 0 0.03. Plug that into the minimum. Okay, we are nearly there. So let's move this aside, give myself some space. We need our lerp node finally. And like this in as the B value of our lerp. What we're going to do here is create some sort of depth around the edges, a little bit of extra brightness, a little bit of extra sort of effect. It's a little similar to a Fresnel, but uh, slightly different. It's going to be good for our purposes. First, we need a camera vector, and we're going to need the vertex normal, vertex normal weld space nodes. We're going to need to find the dot product of these two values to get the to get the sort of edge effect that we want. And if you would like to see it, just right-click this node and start previewing. And there you can see what it looks like. See the, the darkness around the edge? This is what we're going to manipulate to create a little bit of extra sort of brightness effect. From the dot products, we need a new power. And then another scalar parameter. This one is our edge saturation, which we'll put into the exponent. Set this to fairly low, 0 0.1. And this into the alpha. And as the A value, we're going to get total white. All right, that's the material finished. But our main node here, we're going to need to set this to translucent and to unlit just to get our glow happening properly. And we'll plug this into the emissive. And there we have it. There is our moon material all sorted. We'll use an instance to manipulate these values in real time once it's in the world. For now though, just hit save. Head back to our editor and make a new material. This one for our glow. Glow maps. I talk when I type, I've noticed that. Don't know why. So our glow material is pretty simple. Start off the same way we did with the with the moon, set it to translucent and unlit. And bring up a texture coordinate. From the texture coordinate, we're gonna need a radial radial gradient exponential. It's one of these material functions from within the, the engine content. Plug our texture coordinates into the UVs, and we'll just need a couple of scalars. Uh, one for density. Oh my god density and another one for radius so our radius will set to 0 0.5 for now and the density at 2 and plug them into their corresponding corresponding points so this will get us only so far we'll plug this into emissive so that you can or opacity so that you can see and we'll make it a plane just so that it's there we go at the moment it's just a black splotch uh, but we're going to fix that uh, we'll fix that now. So make a multiply node and a value. This is another glow crank. Our glow crank, we'll set it at 0 0.5 like the last one. Plug it into our, our B and then from our radial gradient into the, into the multiply, then into the emissive. And there we go. There's our, our white splotch. We'll use this as the glow behind the moon. So hit save. Go back to the editor and now we'll make a couple of instances. One for our moon material one for our glow material. Then in our moon blueprint, we'll put these, put these materials onto our objects. So obviously the sphere gets the moon, moon instance and the plane, our glow plane, gets the glow. Make sure you use the instances so that we can manipulate these values. All right, so it looks a little strange right now, but now we can get on to, to making our script. And what we're about to do here is just set some values uh, set some variables so that we can we can cut a bit of work out once it's in the once it's in the in the level. For a start, uh, we always want the moon to be facing the origin point of the level, pointing directly at the world, so that when we rotate the moon, it's it's going to rotate you know along its along its axis, so that it, you know so that it's pointing the right way. Otherwise, we'll just be mucking about with rotating the rotating the object in the editor, and it's just it's just a whole mess. That's why we're using an actor. So uh, in order to do that, make a new variable. Uh, this one, we'll call it the origin, which is just going to be a vector set to 0, 0, 0, just to give us the 0, 0, 0 value of the world. So get that, and then get the actor location. We're going to subtract these from each other, just like this. I know, right? It's boring maths. <laughs> we'll normalize 
normalize our vector and get our rotation angle from that. So rotation from X vector. Done and done. Now the node that we need is set actor rotation. And we plug this rotation from X vector into a new rotation and then hook up our construction script to the node. Sorted. So that takes care of our automatic rotation. Now the next thing is to control the size of the moon in the sky from this blueprint. Because we could do it in the editor, but we don't want to just change the size of the whole actor, just the objects inside the actor. So make a new variable, this one called scale. This needs to be a float. We'll compile that so we get the values. The default will be at one, and we want this one to be public so that we can manipulate it from within the editor. So we'll pull this guy up, get our scale. And from here, we want to set the actor, set actor scale 3D. So right click on this vector for the new scale and split the struct bin and plug in scale into every single one. We can manipulate each value with just our one variable. And that's finished. That's our blueprint done. So we'll save everything. We'll come back to our scene. And where are we? Drag our blueprints, drag our blueprint in. And as you can see, it's automatically pointing at the origin point of, of our scene. Which is very cool. This does a, a lot of the work for us when it comes to actually positioning the moon. Speaking of, that is the next thing that we're up to. Now, these are some, some big values. I'm just going to throw the moon right out there in the sky. And so we're going we're gonna to plug in some, some huge values. For one, uh, let's start with X minus 830,000. I thought they were big numbers. For Y, minus 650,000. And for Z, 720,000. So where'd that put it? Ah, there it is, up there in the sky. It's really little at the moment, so we get our scale. We'll set this up to something massive like 150, maybe even 200. 200 might be a bit big. Let me go with 150. Done. And now the only remaining thing to do is open up our instances. We'll start with uh, start with the glow. Let's see. Get our radius up. The glow going. Set a nice looking glow there. Then with the moon. Let's enable these values and we can manipulate things like our glow, our edge saturation, look quite high. I like these effects and our rotation angle. So we can point the moon. Uh, I can't off the top of my head remember which way the moon faces Earth. I think it's something like this, something, some angle like that. Starting to look pretty good. You can even set a panner to this to make the moon. Make the moon spin if you wanted to. No, not that it does, but you know, you can do anything with these with these values, anything that you want. And that puts our moon puts our moon in place, and it's far enough away that it's not gonna, you know, it's it's not gonna move around in the sky. It's gonna appear to be totally static. So with the with our instances all set like that, there are a few more things we can do. Uh, for example, we get our post process volume out. Uh, let's look up say bloom. We can turn the bloom on. And sort of make a make a bit of moonlight. So if you really want the moon just to, to, to pop out. Uh, another thing we can do, so if we go to our world outliner and find the skylight, we can enable light shafts. Where are our light shafts? Uh, no, I actually think they're in our light source. The light source, light shafts. Yeah, here we go. Some light shafts. Oh, there's our light shafts. So, uh, in order for our light shafts to match our moon, we're obviously going to need to rotate him around. Probably the fiddliest point of <laughs> of the whole thing. We can't just bind our custom moon. So we'll drag that up. They're a bit intense at the moment, but you can set these values to whatever you'd like. Let's see what we can do here. <laughs> it's a slightly more subtle. Some subtle light shafts. I mean they're still very intense. It's actually. Pull them up. 
And there we go. There's our moon. So we can hit play and have a look at it. There we go. There's our moon up in the sky. Pretty easy effect. Pretty simple to pull off. And uh, the results speak for themselves. I think this looks this looks quite nice. So uh, that's it. Uh, that's it for me in this video. I'd like to give a quick shout out to 80 level who picked up my vertex painting video and ran an article about it. That's, that's absolutely wild. I, I couldn't be more thankful. So yeah, massive, massive shout out to 80 level. And uh, I've, all I've, all it does is, is motivate, motivate me further. I, I'm going to keep making videos. I'm going to keep making cool stuff and, and uh, there'll be so much more to come in the future. Thanks again to everyone that subscribed lately. Thanks to 80 level. And uh, I hope you guys like the video. I'll see you guys next time.